All right, you guys, let's go ahead and take a look at what you did for the uh, photo bash assignment. Uh, Salvo said he'd like to go first, which I say is fine. And then I'll look at the ones that are free, free floating out here and then go through each one of the folders one by one. And we'll take a look at everybody's because it should go fairly quickly. Okay. So Salvo's up first and we've got this really cool overgrown mansion with werewolves and stuff. That's really nice. Very cool. I'm going to zoom around a little bit and take a look. Nice. I've got a lot of glare on my screen. It's a little hard to, for me to see. But generally, I think you got the idea working really nicely here. That's cool. I love the, the little werewolves perched on the top there. All right, cool. The only thing that's a little odd to me is right here in this area where we've got what appears to be a fountain with a tree growing out. And then I kind of see stairs leading down, but I also see half of like a banister or something, almost almost like this is an aquarium. I think maybe some part of it was just left in by mistake. And I also can't see where it ends to the left here, but that's the only part that looks a little bit odd. The rest of it seems perfectly fine. And I like how the, the vines and stuff integrate with the, the scene. The fog effect's pretty cool too. Salvo, do you know what's going on with that part right there? I just can't tell if it's intentional or a mistake. So the, I just added the wolf and some of the left part, but I, I don't know about that part of the background. This was just in the original? Yeah, that, that was uh, part of the original. Huh, I, w I wonder what was going on there. It's, it's just very odd. It almost looks like a plexiglass like barrier or something. Hmm, okay. Well, looks good. Other than that, thank you. Let's take a look at Alan. Cool, so Alan's got a little uh, World War One maybe seen. What's up? What's up? Salvo saying something. Mm hmm So I, on the Word Watch, there was a lot of different uh, colors and I, I tried to fix the, the color to match the background more. Mm hmm uh, Because it, the color of it was overemphasized and and the pose of the wolf didn't really match, so I, I tried to turn it to make it match the scene better. It seems like it all works. Like yeah, it all works now. Cool. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, Alan's got this World War One, I, I think, scene where we've got these uh, soldiers in a valley with planes flying overhead and what looks like an overturned tank. Oh no, that tank is upright. Just doesn't have the top part. Cool. So it's looking pretty nice. <clears throat> Let me see. The There's only one part that looks a little bit odd, which is this um, explosion, because it's really hard to mask out a, an explosion by hand. Like you're almost never gonna do it. You kind of have to use different methods that we didn't cover, such as color-based selection um, Alan, I see you're in here. Uh, what did you do to try to get this to fit with your scene? Uh, I yeah. I mean, you did a lot, and this one on the right seems to work a bit better, probably because it's against this mountainside. But this one, is we can kind of see the edges, and it's because something so wispy like that, we're always going to see the sky or the background bleed through it. There are, however, techniques for ex extracting like hair, wispy hair, and smoke from an image based on color-based selection, but I didn't go over those tools because they're much more advanced. So don't beat yourself up about the fact that this didn't work too well. With the tools I taught, you just can't do it. 
you know. So what you would have to do essentially is use those uh, more advanced masking tools, and then probably also a blending layer where you darken this on top of uh, the background or use an overlay or something like that, and it would make the smoke kind of semi-transparent as a trade-off, but it would also get rid of these kind of halos around the edge. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. This is really good overall, though. You have any trouble doing that? Cool. Very good. And I like the, the planes in the sky kind of looking like they're a little farther away. Very good. All right. Cool. I think it's Aviel. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right each time, but Aviel. <laughs> We've got a, a kind of conceptual, almost, uh, you know, kind of horror-esque kind of landscape here. I'm not sure what this creature is, but he sure is intimidating. And then we've got some rock spires and castles, and I'm not even sure what this is, but it almost looks like some sort of big dead creature, maybe, or cave opening or something. It's really cool. So I see that you're here in chat. You want to tell us about this? If you have a microphone? Yeah, um, I was pressing the wrong button. Ah. Um, Mm -hmm. So the uh, monster was the second to last. The spire I wanted to keep because I wanted a monolith mm -hmm. thing, but I couldn't find any good ones. Okay. So this one was the only one I could get. Sure. The one on the far left in the back, it was supposed to be an abandoned town. I wanted to put it in, oh. in front of the spire, but it wouldn't like, it didn't look natural. So you wanted it like over here or something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, finding the right angle is really tough. You'd probably have to look through, like, stock photos of, like, Swiss or Alpine towns and just click through, 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 and just find a few that you think would work. Um, gathering that resource can be the hardest part of this. But, yeah, I mean, as a concept, it looks just fine. Everything's pretty well thrown together. Um, the gray, black, and white nature of the creature is a little bit harsh against this background. I think all you really had to do is add a adjustment layer on top of it to color it, you know, some sort of basic tone to kind of match maybe like the moonlight color of the sky, and then it would blend in perfectly. But, in, yeah, in general, I mean, it fits pretty well. And I can't tell most of these elements were added except for this one little town and the creature in the front. So, did a pretty good job. Yeah, thank you. Very creepy. Oh, we saw salvos, right? Okay. So we've got, um, oh man, how do I pronounce your name? Isaiah? 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 Isaiah, shit, wow, I just, I'm just illiterate. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so this one's a bit confusing because the pieces don't look like they fit together. I see a big rock surface and what looks like part of a junkyard because I can see a tire in there. And then a tower, the flag works on the tower, but then the sky is like bright blue, and I don't really see any shadows or light anywhere. So it's like the pieces are here, but it's not really working together at the moment. Is Isaiah in here? I don't see him in the chat. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't think he's here. So I, I don't know what's going on, um, what the idea was, but if it's like a big floating rock with a tower in the sky or something then the dark dark shadows on this lower rock aren't working because we'd be surrounded by bright light being that high up in the air um, and I just don't have any sense of like how these pieces fit together so maybe you need to spend a little bit longer looking for the right pieces in the right way to fit together because right now it's just kind of a big chunk of rock and, and dirt so this would be like going from scratch a little bit too much. It puts all of the the responsibility of like perspective and sense of place on you, which is way harder to accomplish. Uh, let's see. So we've got Lilia. Cool. We've got kind of a creepy owl flying through the woods. I see a uh, wolf back there, a little cabin, and some fire. So the first thing that jumps out at me is that the fire doesn't look like it belongs at all because it's black and bright blue with like this kind of airbrush halo around it, fire doesn't really work that way. Um, the thing about fire is that it casts light. And so what we would want is to have light cast on all of these trees nearby. 
um, the fire itself would probably glow but you need some adjustment layers for that but it kind of just looks like a big cutout sitting in the in the grass which essentially is what's going on but consider like the lighting situation where the the trees would cast shadows the ground would illuminate the sides of the trees facing the fire would light up blue and all of that would require different adjustment layers so stay away from special effect things like that for now until you get more experience with like painting and life drawing because that's going to be the hardest thing the rest of the elements look pretty fine though they they work just about the way I would want them to um, the tone on the house is just a little too bright where it meets the ground here that kind of sticks out but actually in the top it works just fine like that looks great so I can count the background the two animals the cabin and the fire is there another element in here that I'm not seeing I see four but I don't see oh no that would be five cabin animals fire and background that is five yeah very good yeah um, be careful when you're cutting out something like this uh, cabin not to use too soft of a of a brush when masking because the fade out doesn't really work most of the time it needs to be kind of a sharper edge to work properly I think if you just cut up to this garden bit right here and then maybe trimmed out the bright grass then it would work properly or turn the tone down a tiny bit all right thank you cool we got a really nice snowy scene okay so we've got a big old kind of castle way up on the hill back here mountains it looks like maybe the the hills were cut out and put on top of a uh, a sky because I can see a little halo around the top of those but I'm not entirely sure that that's what happened um, we've got a nearby forest and then this what appears to be like bridge or stoneworks and some big monolithic kind of statues cool so some of what's working is that generally it's it's the right tone right contrast and we can see their placement in the scene is nice what's not working is that the tones have not been balanced enough so the close statues are kind of washed out which makes them feel far away but they should have higher contrast like these trees because they're close up so the farther away something goes the lower contrast it can have the closer up it is the higher contrast it needs to have the opposite is working against the the castle we've got blackish windows whereas they would kind of be much much lighter gray being so far away um, and it's sort of the opposite effect that because that would be seen from far away we would want to um, make this more sky colored essentially the bridge itself is kind of not working for me either because we've got a lot of very soft transitions that are half erased and half visible it may just be that you're trying to do like frost and mist and stuff like that which is which is cool to try but it's just kind of been overdone a little bit too much to where it looks messy and smudgy now as an idea it's a good idea um, as an execution it's making it draw attention to itself down in this area so just watch out for that uh, putting too many things in one little place um, working too many ideas together at one time can muddy the whole execution so you want to get one essential kind of idea and stick to that um, and I think there's a lot going on in this shot ambitions good but you know you got to temper it with uh, what, what can you make look really good right now as well okay so little bits of tone and contrast adjustment would probably go a long way here and then just simplifying the bridge and uh, connection points down here would probably help too all right thank you cool Juan's got a uh, battle scene this is like a middle ages kind of battle scene where we've got a lot of guys on horseback and knights and stuff some dead animals and stuff um, I can see pretty clearly what was copy and pasted in because the shadows are not working at all um, if I ignore that and I look at just kind of the tone of the animals and people that's working fine but the shadows as they are drawn on are not in the right positions or the right sizes either so this looks like an overcast day right we've got a lot of shadow cloud cover which diffuses the light and it makes it so that um, the whole sky kind of glows dully and we wouldn't see strong cast shadows um, what that means is we would have small soft shadows underneath everything 
but emphasis on the small. Here is a shadow. It's enormous, but there's nothing to cast that shadow. If it's these guys, no way do they cast that shadow. It's way too big. It needs to be right under their feet, right where they're touching the earth especially. Um, the horse is a little bit closer. The horse is casting a shadow underneath it, but it's a bit too dark and overbearing. It needs to be lightened up pretty considerably. And then some of these things just don't have one. So these guys kind of seem like they have one, but it's not focused on their feet enough. This one doesn't have one at all. This um, staff sticking out of the ground, or this um, spear, it has what appears to be a small, sharp, like kidney bean shaped shadow, which wouldn't make any sense for a, a stick. It would just have a little one, and then whatever shadow it would cast would just be lost, and we wouldn't see it anymore. Uh, the tents need one as well. Um, and all of these guys in the background need little bits. Their sizes are also kind of going crazy. So we've got really big giants fighting back here because if we slide them forward they would have to grow larger and this guy is tiny compared to that one. Um, you can't just have different sizes all over. Wherever their feet are on the ground would determine how big they need to be and that's just kind of a, a staple of um, perspective. So be careful about being a little bit too haphazard and random with the sizes. Uh, right now it's it's making them look like there's giants and, and tiny little people out there. Okay. So generally the, the cutting and pasting is fine. Like I don't see any problems with the edges of these people or of the animals or of the objects, but it's just the shadows. The shadows are the thing that's really um, dragging it down right now. Okay. Let's see. Devin. Devin's got a very, very creepy, high contrasted, looks like horror kind of scene. So what I'm seeing is um, a wooded area with a lake, a little Grim Reaper character over here, some sort of creepy crouched person, someone in the water, and then like an abandoned house. And if there's another element, then I'm not catching it. Um, so one thing that works here is that the really high contrast, harsh nature of everything is working because that's pretty easy to balance. You just got to make sure that you've got black shadows and um, high uh, light highlights and you've basically done it. The two elements that look a little bit like they could use more of it are these two, um, the Grim Reaper figure and the house. I think that the darkness is there but the lightness is not. Um, their color is matching the scene which is good but I would bump up their contrast just a bit more to match the rest of the scene then it might be necessary to fade them out a little bit based on how far they are, although I think the Reaper probably not. The house may be just a tad more, and then that would work. These two figures in the foreground, especially this one, I think works very well, um, given that the environment that he's on is like a black and white speckly field. So very good. Um, it would be great, it'd be really cool, to see a little bit of the reflection of the house in the water. And what you would do there is just take, once you've finished the house, um, duplicate it, flip it upside down, and then mask it so that it's only visible in the water, and then fade it way, way down, and you get a really quick, easy reflection that way. So that'd be a really cool detail to include. All right, very nice. Thank you, Devin. Um, is that it for this folder? Come, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the bottom of this folder for some reason. That was weird. Let me refresh this. I feel like people are adding stuff after the fact. All right, well, that was all in here, I think. That's what it looks like. Let's go up to the folders. Ah, so a lot of you guys included your original pictures used, and that is very nice, because then we can look for these. No, you didn't include that one. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So then we can look for these in your composition. It can help us to understand how it was put together. Cool. Neat. Yeah, we've got this this kind of space-faring uh, pirate ship, and the really cool skull planet. I love that skull planet. That's great. Okay. Take a look around. The sails are, are kind of sticking out as being not particularly believable. I mean, I know what the, the idea was, and that was a good uh, try at it, but it's not really working yet. You'd have to probably look at something like a, a shimmery kind of metallic um, thin cloth and see what it does uh, as it bends in 
perspective, this didn't really work entirely. You might even take like real sails as long as they were white and cut them out and like fade them down and use them as a mask for a space texture. That might work because the white sails wouldn't have very much as of their own texture anyway. Um, so consider something like that for next time. Color balancing the ship, cutting it out looks just fine. Planet looks like it integrates just fine as well. Uh, really looks cool in this scene like that. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of other elements. Um, we've got the, the space for the sails, the ship, the planet, and the background. I think we need one more, unless I'm mistaken. There may be something in here I'm not seeing, though. The aurora? Oh, that wasn't in this space background to begin with? Oh, it wasn't. Cool. Okay, great. Yeah, that works greatly. So well that I didn't even question it. Very good. Okay. Um, and if you had any problems with this or want to contribute anything, let me know. Otherwise, good stuff. All right, thank you. Trevor, let's take a look. Okay, so we've got this um, sort of Middle Eastern or um, uh, Mediterranean kind of inlet with ancient stoneworks here. It's pretty cool. So we've got this river, some valleys of rock, and a city, palace, something like that, way in the background. And I think maybe the cave was added as well. It looks like it was. Cool. So a little bit more thought put into the masking of this into this water is probably the first thing that I would recommend. Um, the reason for that is that the water surface looks really choppy. So that to me says that it's flowing quickly, violently. If it hits a surface like one of these stone columns, it's going to do something. And that thing is probably going to be splash up in the air, um, create kind of white water streams that, that flow away from it. And I don't know which direction the water is flowing into the cave or out of it, but depending on that answer, those those white water kind of foam would either come towards us, towards camera, or away from us back towards the cave. I see what appears to be a shadow in the water, which is a really good thought, um, and shadows painted on the archway a bit as well, but the placement of those shadows on the archway looks a little bit random. Like, I'm not sure why this needs to be darkened when this is bright and sunshiny. Um, this one makes sense on the side, but then it stops right here and that part is not in shadow. And so I'm kind of scratching my head wondering what's going on there. Um, the other part is, although you are darkening it and making it look like a shadow, it's a very, very blurry, indistinct shadow and it needs a little bit more time put into it. Probably the intensity turned down just a bit too. Uh, also, not all the colors are matching up very well. The cliff face on the left-hand side has this beige-gray kind of composition. This one has a yellowish-orange, and then this one is like a pink or something. They don't appear to really match, especially, and a little bit of more careful uh, color balancing would be called for here. Okay, But pretty ambitious, pretty interesting uh, choice. I like the idea a lot. And the, the cutting out of this monument seems to have gone very well. Um, you did a really good job there. Just think about the bottom connection to the water. Okay? And nice touch with the shadows here as well. Cool. Thank you. Let's see. Which one are we on? Rudy. Okay. Oh, yeah. I put a, a comment in here earlier because I looked through. So a few of you got comments already. Oh. Um, I can't zoom in on this because it's really, really tiny. Um, if I check this, let's do uh, details. Well, tell me size. No, it says 44 kilobytes, which is very, very tiny, but it doesn't say the actual size of it. Um, it's too small. The, the images that you downloaded were not high resolution images, Rudy. You got to download larger things. Also, they've been squished a lot. The background looks fine, but the characters are all squishing. Uh, when you're rescaling things, make sure that you're holding down shift to constrain proportions. Actually, I think in newer versions of Photoshop, it's the opposite. You don't hold shift and it constrains proportions and you hold it and it breaks them. 
Is that right, you guys? Because I have an older version of Photoshop. Anybody know offhand? How does it work for you? To make them the same? Okay, that would be the same as mine. So then make sure you're holding shift when you're scaling because these people definitely look very squished. Um, if you did the color balancing, then it worked only on these left two characters. The right two characters don't appear to have any of it happening right now. Um, that's what I'm seeing. Um, I'm looking for the presence of shadows too and I don't see them either. I was looking at this one shadow, it looked like it was coming off this leg, but actually it's just coming from that tree. And I think it's in this, in, it's in this scene by default. So we need some contact shadows, we need color balance, got to start with bigger uh, images. Oh, okay, so Nate says in 2020 it switched. Okay. So contact shadows, color balancing, bigger images, that's kind of the, the rough list right now. Uh huh. Yeah, but when I put in other images, they were like too big. Um. Well, the background is the size of this image that you've turned in, and it was too small. Those characters were probably of a more reasonable size, but you got to check before you just download and use them. Okay. So should I just replace the background? Well, if you do it in your same Krita um, file, it's just going to be the same size. So you actually have to have a, a image size that is larger. I don't know, but bigger than that, let me um, just say a default of somewhere around 2,000 pixels, wide or tall. I'm going to open Krita right now. All right, so I'm going to just do a new one. So here are all the sizing options for when I do a new one. The default that I just start out is 2048 square. You don't have to do that exactly, but something in that neighborhood is going to be good. If you want to change the size of your image, then we can come up to, let's see, well, we could always trim to image size. Um, resize canvas right here. So resize canvas, and then you can enter in whatever you want. It's percent based or pixel based. Go for pixels so that you know for sure what you've got and just make sure that you've got it somewhere around the vicinity of 2000. Um, don't go arbitrary though, you actually have to do this in your image search. So when you're looking for an image, and let's just say um, dark forest, remember to turn on tools size large. Because now when I click on this, I can see 1200 by 1200. That's decent. 1200 by 794, decent, 1200 by 800, 1920 by 1024, perfect. All, right. all of these are above 1000, usually above 1500. Those are all pretty decent sizes to be working at. And it's because I changed those settings at the top. All right. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you. Let's see, Elias. Cool. Yeah, this looks very nice. It's a little hard to tell what's been added, actually, because it all works so well. I think that this stone path may have been added. I think the pagoda was probably added. Other than that, I'm not sure. So let's look. He's actually given the images used, so let's find out. So we've got a um, pathway, a flat pathway. And, okay, yeah, stone path. A lake. Clouds. And the pagoda. Really? Huh. I guess it is. I, I read this as a hillside but this is probably the flat area in that big path earlier. Wow, that's pretty good. That That's a pretty nice perspective effect. Cool. The clouds make the sky a little foggy, and yes, I cover the path. Yeah, cool. 
Um, I think the only criticism I could give is that you may have gone a little too hard on the color adjustment to where the whole thing is like a sepia tone. If you're going for sepia tone, well done, and it works. If you're going to just kind of make everything work together, you've kind of drained all the color out of it because the orange is a bit overwhelming now. Because when I look at these originals, there's a lot more variety in the color, and now it's all just kind of orange. So maybe tone that down a bit because it's a little overwhelming, unless you're specifically going for like an Instagram filter look or a sepia tone look, in which case you did it. But yeah, this is a pretty good job. Any questions or anything, Elias? Cool, thank you. Yeah, that's very good. I like how you turned that into a hillside. All right, Jasmine. Jasmine's got the references also. Oh, cool. Wow, what a place to live. And <laughs> this is almost, almost like as a joke to me, there's like an ADT alarm thing here when this person is clearly in the middle of nowhere in the woods. That's kind of funny to me. Um, I'm not sure if she meant that in a funny way, but I, I read that as a funny thing. Um, this is really pretty. It's a great big waterfall and stream. Um, I'm not sure if the log was at it. It looks like it might have been. The house definitely. And then a little bit of the background hillside almost certainly was added. I think that the, the only thing that's bothering me right now is that the masking is a bit too soft in places and this one picture in particular was way too low resolution for this application. You probably needed to find a much higher resolution version of that waterfall uh, because it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb right now. Um, so little places where the masking isn't working, like right here, it kind of fades out. It needs to be a sharper transition between these two areas. Um, also the bottom of this kind of cuts off suddenly so the masking isn't even very complete. Um, just be careful about little errors like that. Um, and in the background for the trees, the trees are really complicated, but you got to try to cut them out sharp because right now I can see like blue sky through the branches and white sky around them. And it just makes it seem like they're caught in some cotton candy or something like that. Um, same thing on the top ridge up here. So watch out for the sharpness of the, of the cutout in places like that. Although for the house itself, it looks like it fits in the landscape pretty nicely. I think that maybe it's because some of those trees came with this house, like these ones, because over here on this wall where this definitely could just be a nice sharp cutoff, I can see it fading into the rock still. So I, I think you're abusing the airbrush tool. You know, you need some sharper black and white cutouts here and there. Um, and I see little errors here too, like little stuff floating over the top of this house as well. Okay. Generally the tones are working pretty well though. I would say, again, probably just this one waterfall picture could probably be adjusted blue a little bit to kind of fit the rock surfaces back here. Uh, other than that, all the tones seem to be working okay. All right. And I don't think she's in chat right now. All right. Thank you. Let me just see. Out of curiosity, let's look. See what the... Okay. Yeah, definitely the, the log. Okay. Probably the, the general low area background the house okay there's the waterfall and you can see how much smaller it is and the trees okay so the trees were not a part of the the house so the the top of the house was nicely cut out then yeah i mean it's got its own trees back here so little errors are going to be covered up by that but yeah the house was nicely cut out all right very good thank you Uh, Lilia, oh, we already looked at yours, but these are your references. Got it. Crystal. Cool. Very creepy. Nice pathway. Kind of misty. Ferns. Great dilapidated building and a spooky person way back there. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, generally tone is working. Colors seem to be harmonized enough. Um, house surface looks a little bit brightly lit for this scene, but you've brought the tones down enough to where it doesn't really jump out. 
it just makes me feel like we should see some light shafts in the ferns and maybe on the pathway. Um, I can see some sort of smudginess all over the path, and I'm not sure if that was an attempt to make fog or if it's something to do with masking. It is a little bit dark and brown, though. If it's mist, it would have to be a bit lighter. And if it was a bit lighter, it would probably make us feel like the light was um, being hit by this brighter kind of sunshine that's coming under the house over here. Right, cool. Let's look at the images used real fast. See. Okay, so there's our pathway. There's the house. Creepy woods with fog. I'm not sure if I saw where that was implemented. Maybe behind the house. I don't know if that one was included or not. And then, yep, there's our spooky person back in the woods. Let me see if I can see where all that goes. Yeah, okay, so dark forest back here. I don't really see that silhouette one anywhere. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it works out pretty well. Very good. All right, thank you. And Andrew. Oh, we've got an original and the adjusted one. Let's see. So here's the background. Oh, someone else used the same one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, all of the added elements stick out like crazy. So I can I can really really clearly see person added, person added, person added, person added, building chopping block sign and I think even something there unless that's just a leaf in the original yeah it's probably just leaves in the original um, so cutting out things you did it adjusting their tones and colors you didn't do it at all okay we need that part to be applied as well otherwise it just kind of looks like everything's just pasted on which is essentially what's happened now um, once that is accomplished, right, once the, the tones are adjusted, I recommend, like, take a look at these trees. Wherever the trees are next to these guys, they should be no darker than the trees. So just adjust them down to whatever color the, the trunks are, and they'll fade right in. Um, after adjusting the colors, then we need contact shadows under these. So a layer underneath this, but in front of the background, with a blurry-ish kind of dark color painted down and then turned in opacity way down so as to adjust back to the tone of the scene. And then like I mentioned the last person, having the reflection of the cabin in the water would be really cool too. Okay. Cool. And Nathan, you're the last one. Cool. Oh, I did ask this earlier. Why is that green? Oh no! You did mention that before. Crap. So if I if I like pop this into Photoshop and turn on black and white mode, it would probably look just like the rest of the scene, huh? I bet it would. Because that's what, what colorblindness would mean is that you're seeing the value and the value probably matches perfectly. Interesting. I wonder if there's a way for you to compensate for that at all. Um, by using the tools in Photoshop to read the RGB values, it that might be possible. I'm sure it is, but I couldn't really think of a way from the tools you um, presented. Yeah. I'm getting certain colors, I would get the color palette you based on that. Right. But yeah, it's a tough one. I, I think what you would have to do is just sample each part of the the scene that you're pasting in and just look at the RGB values and notice if it goes way off to one side or not but really it's it's not something you have to deal with because the idea here is just fine and just knowing that it's a colorblindness thing it's like oh well of course then I just shift that over to yellow and we're fine you know so let's focus on the on the other part the hornets that are in here uh, this guy looks great the closest one to us is the most likely one that would look bad and he looks fantastic. Um, you've got a good shadow underneath him. It even looks like he's interacting with this box almost. Um, good tone. He's in the shadow area. It's fantastic. This one in the background I love in particular because it's been adjusted really nicely to look like it's further away in this pseudo fog or dust that we've got here. Um, this guy sticks out a little bit more because his contrast is just a bit too high. So it's like he's in the shadow area too. Um, tone it down a little bit to kind of match the debris 
around him and he'll fit nicely into the scene as well. Did you put this on? <laughs> very good. I almost didn't notice it. Yeah, very good. Anything else that we haven't noticed in the scene? This stuff. Well, not really. If you like expand it a bit more, you can actually see I didn't. We're able to erase everything properly. Like you zoom in, there's still some white. Other than that, that's about it. Uh oh, like right here. Uh, not that one. Like if you uh, looked on the darker part of the white, uh, like there's some. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like um, lines or plants that are still kind of like not cropped properly. Um. Here. Oh, that's so tiny. I mean, we would never notice. It's in this bright sky. All it looks like is the sun is hitting something reflective. Right? At that size, with this kind of color behind it, how that reads to the mind is something is reflective and the sun hit it just right. So, yeah, not really an issue at all. No, that's cool. Did a... Oh, down here. No, I think you did it. Yeah, I read that as a reflection. I think that looks great. I wouldn't have thought of this as a puddle unless you did that, but since you did that, I'm now thinking of it as a puddle. Like, I think it's just um, some smoother concrete. And eh, maybe it is a puddle. I can't tell. But yeah, no, I, I read that just fine. Very good. Usually in this sort of situation, if someone doesn't draw something uh, attention to something, you probably did it right. Because then it just convinces people that the whole image is just the image and it isn't a bunch of little separate bits. Yep, very good. What are they after, by the way, these murder hornets? Yeah. Okay. All right. So they're not after our money or our delicious honey. Maybe they just want murder. All right. Very good. All right. I think you guys generally nailed that one. It seems like that went pretty well. We are going to pivot away from photo editing and uh, high resolution painting into the very low resolution world of pixel art. So we're going to start exploring how to make pixel art, how to use different programs uh, to accomplish that, and then how we would apply it into a game development uh, environment. And so these first two little bits here, we're just going to do a basic pixel art um, set of items. I'm going to do fruit. Um, these tutorials are from uh, quite a ways back, but they should cover everything that you need to know. Um, because we're going to start using Piscal instead of any of the programs that we've previously used. Piscal is free to use online. In fact, they recommend that you use it in browser. And so if you're not already using uh, Chrome, I recommend using Chrome and just hit the Create Sprite button right in browser. Um, it's got fantastic tools, which I cover in the first video for creating pixel art as well as animation built right in over here. It's got a layer system, including transparency. It's got a preview animation window, and it's just fantastic. Uh, before I learned about Piscal, I had done pixel art in Photoshop laboriously, and it was hell by comparison. So I strongly recommend not ever trying to do pixel art in Photoshop, even though they're are some tools there that could help you do it. Um, virtually any other program is a better choice and this one is a very good choice. Um, as far as dealing with the files that Piscal provides, what I'm going to have you guys turn in is a PNG image. But what Piscal uses, if I hit save, is a .piscal file. So if I name this as like, whoop, went away. If I name this as like test1 and I save .piscal this just downloaded to my sheet machine and it's in my uh, downloads folder. There we go. So it's just right here. You can't open this just by double clicking. You have to open it by opening up this website and then going to this 
um, this menu uh, import or can I just open let's see save offline resize export import oh there we go load piscal file right here so you just browse and that'll bring up a web browser so we go to downloads and I pick I think I did one earlier let's see what did I do earlier I think it was a gem yeah there we go and now I can just replace this and I've got this big rock in here that I did earlier okay so that's how you deal with piscal files but know that I don't want you to turn in a piscal file I want you to if we do export a gif is fine and a png is fine uh, gif is usually only for animations though so pick a png um, also if you want to export it with a scale multiplier that is very convenient because that means we'll be able to see it large even though it's not large but just know that in general for game development purposes you want to turn that all the way down to one so that we're just getting one pixel per pixel but you can turn this up larger if you want to be able to view it on someone's computer like six times will allow them to view it uh, pretty big just by looking at it as if it was a normal image. Okay. Um, so go ahead and check out those videos. Uh, follow all the stuff that I, I provide in there. Um, there's also an article linked here about pixel art tips. I'll cover a lot of this on Friday when I do our actual demo day. And then our assignment is here where we want to create four different fruits. And here are some examples of the kind of thing I'm looking for. Okay. Any questions about any of that? Nope. Nope. So for the assignment, we're just creating fruits? Yes, four fruits. Yeah. Four different fruits, and they should look like they stylistically belong together. All right, then. That will be it for today, and I will see you guys on Friday for our demo.